Hi there, my name is Margo and it's a third episode of my series of videos where I try to implement operating system on um, Rust for Raspberry Pi from scratch. Uh, if you remember, I followed the tutorials um, from uh, GitHub repository about this thing and on the last episode we implemented um, serial output of the text into OART interface and there have been a couple of hacky solutions to make it possible and now I follow in the third, like the next uh, tutorial of this um, tutorial on the same repository and the goal of this repository to improve the initial solution of the um, of serial output. Let's recap a little bit and see what we already have done. Uh, additionally, I changed my setup, so I have camera here, monitor here, I record a screencast uh, directly in the same time, so you might hear some clicky sound, uh, hopefully it won't disturb. So let's get into this. Um, if you remember, we had like println um, macros that we implemented here in print.rs, and when we call in this function, every time this underscore print it's called and we uh, call write the underscore fmt uh, which sends the arguments that we pass in. If we go into the implementation of this, so basically we have this QM output and for this structure we implement uh, the write function uh, which takes itself mutable. So this all thing works only because we receive like a pass to this function uh, self as a mutable reference and every time when you call this new instance of QM output um, would be created. So um, let's say we want to have a single instance of this output. Um, after all we have a limited amount of physical interfaces so we want to have some information, statistics or we want to interact with a single instance of this interface because we have one, a single a physical uh, instance of this interface. So to do so we need a static uh, QM output, so we, we need a static uh, instance. But if it's this instance will be static, we won't be able to pass a mutable reference to it. Um, so Rust borrowing and so on, this ownership model won't allow us to do so. So to make it possible, we need to introduce a locking system, a basic mutex, but it's not a real mutex because it, it, it's not resistant against concurrence access. Uh, we don't need it right now we, because we're working on the single core. So we need something that will allow us to mutate something inside of immutable things. So we have immutable um, QM output uh, and we have some mutable things inside of this QM output. Uh, in our case, this will be a statistics, how many character, characters we send through the interface. So to do so, uh, I already implemented this thing according to tutorial and I'll try to explain these things. So let's um, let's check out a main branch and uh, the whole thing is implemented in synchronization.rs. Um, if we will um, visit here, so here is a bunch of links, really useful links. I um, suggest to read these things. It's, uh, I also leave the links in description. So basically when we, um, uh, what we introduce here is like mutex interface, uh, which is implemented by null lock system. So uh, this is exactly what I told, it uh, allows us to mutate something inside of something which is not mutable. Um, you can see it here basically. And uh, this so-called interior mutability. So when, when we implement it uh, here and if we go to the console.rs, so we 
have a couple of changes here. So we had only like QM output here, but we have like QM output inner, exactly what we will mutate. And it contains chars written. So number of chars that we wrote into this interface. And we have like our QM output and it's defined as a static. So we will have a single instance of QM output, uh, which will have QM output inner, which stores our statistics. And every time when we when we send a, um, a character, so it's still sent to the hard coded address in the um, register address and byte by byte as usually. And every time when we when we write it, we so you see it like inner mutability, uh, interior mutability, we change, um, increase the number of sent characters. And of course this whole information is stored. And we have also the, uh, we have interface to receive um, this number. So we need the statistics and we have here is like implemented function. So this console that, uh, to produce like interface statistics for QM output. And it has basically a function that returns this value. How we can use it? Um, we have here our print.rs. Um, it remains basically the same. And we have this console rs. It, uh, so, produce like it's a model so it produces the interface and we make a trade to import all these uh, interfaces and all these traits as um, yeah as all and if we go into the main.rs we see so we use this feature trade alias um, remember that this feature thing is not available in a stable version of the rust um, 2018, so it's only available in the nightly version. So it's uh, one one of this hackiness. I hope that it will be soon available and stable, so so we can switch to the stable version. So uh, we import again this module synchronization, and here is so we use statistics and tell it, and when we send them, um, so let's do this this way. Um, just to make it more beautiful. Um, so we print a message and in the next message we retrieve these statistics. Because we have a single instance of our QM output, this character written will be same. So if we, we send here some amount of the messages, some amount of the characters, and this number will be stored this inner uh, thing. And when we are done, we do not call um, panic anymore. We just try to uh, park a core. We, it will be like wait forever thing. Um, anyway, it's uh, like it's an infinite loop and it's really like lots of CPU. So be careful with this because I run in this on the emulator. I don't have a real problem with um, overheating CPU, but if we'll run this code on the true hardware, there will be a really temperature problems, I assume, because like infinite loop still loads CPU. And let's try to run it. Save it and uh, make QMO. All looks fine. Yeah, yes. So we send this amount of the characters and we got the number of characters sent. You can prove it is like will be uh, 33. It still uh, counts the as a character, the return carriage thing. That's it. Uh, basically, this was everything that uh, planned for this part of the video and part of the tutorial that I'm following. The next will be to write in a real uh, driver for UART interface, which is like relies actually on this locking system. Without this locking system, will uh, it will be complicated to do this. Almost impossible. And additionally to all these things and this tutorial, 
I uh, have a feeling that I um, losing understanding. I can't really follow the whole path how uh, things work in here. And um, I read in another book uh, along the way. It's Programming on Rust, uh, 2018 edition. And we'll, we'll leave the link in the description as well. It's like really must read and really necessary on the way to understand like okay how the whole these things works <laughs> like in in the deep because rust it's not easy language to learn uh, it's not comparable with um the only language we, uh, with with i can compare it is it's a haskell um it has a similar learning curve so I already starting to lose myself in all these complex things like trades and this internal mutability was pretty complex. Um, if you if you get into this, I highly suggest to have some theoretical knowledge reference uh, to rely on. And also, I leave all the links, like useful links, to this internal locking thing uh, and a couple of links from this tutorial uh, in the video description, so you can. Uh, read and follow along that was it thank you for watching i hope you like this uh, if you like this hit the like button consider subscribing and here you see you in next video where we'll implement a first driver for our operating system for what interface bye bye mm -hmm.